these UML state resistance diagrams are based on the on the uh, on the Harel uh, state charts. This is a, a formal representation of state machines that was uh, proposed uh, a few a few years ago by uh, this guy called uh, Harel. And uh, you have the original paper, which you you, sh you should read in the in the in the Moodle page. And the, the RL state charts are the the theoretical fundament for the UML state machine diagrams. And we will see briefly uh, three concepts uh, that are uh, important in the RL state charts and that are heavily used. And they are one of the reasons why they were adopted for uh, UML uh, state machine diagrams. So UML uh, was created um, now some when UML was was created, uh, they adopted different ways of representation. And in the case of state machines, uh, what they did was to adopt what Harold had proposed in the the paper that you see there: state charts, a visual formalism for complex systems. So um, in uh, RL state charts, we have uh, actions and um, activities. Activities are things that uh, take time uh, and uh, exist only in, in states. During a state, we have activities associated to, 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 to that state. And then we have the concept of actions. Actions are instantaneous and they may occur in a tra tra transition, as we have seen before. And then when we enter the, the, the state, while we are in the state or leaving the, 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 the state. And that's uh, represented here. Uh, I have the state A, and I have an action S, which is executed on entry. And I have a, a, an action beta and T, two actions that are executed on exiting. And throughout the, the A state, whenever A state is active, I have this uh, X action happening. As notice that this, this may define the interaction between uh, different uh, state machines. For instance, when this system leaves the A state, it executes the action uh, beta, and this action is an event in the transition from D to, to, to E. Every tra transition has a, a label, which is similar to the label in the UML, where I have the event, the condition, and the, the, the action. In the UML state charts, uh, he uses this kind of parenthesis. UML uh, has a very close no notation, but it uses these square brackets instead of, of um, parentheses. But this is just a, a detail. The idea is exactly the, the same. So one of the important concepts is the hierarchy of uh, state machines. When I have this kind of uh, state machine, I have these uh, three states, uh, A, B, and, and C, and I have that the system goes from either from A or C to B using the same event uh, beta. I can represent these two states as a, a, what's called a superstate, and uh, D is a superstate that includes A and, and C. And in this case, the beta is a transition leaving the superstate D. And sometimes this makes the representation of systems uh, easier to, to understand. Another thing that, that I can do is that in some cases, I'm not interested in the details inside D. So I just omit them and I have the representation of the, the big state D. Or I can just say that Inside D, there are two states, A and C, but I don't provide details about what happens in, inside. So hierarchy allows uh, representing systems with the different levels of uh, de detail. 
For instance, in this in this this case, this is the the example of an, an alarm watch with two different um, alarms. When time uh, hits the value of the alarm one, uh, alarm one should beep. Uh, when time hits the value of the timer two alarm, the alarm two should beep. And if it hits T1 and T1 is set for both alarms, both should, should be. And in this case, I have three states and the reaction to this trade, these uh, three states should be the, the, the same. After 30 seconds, the alarm stops. And if any button in the, in the alarm watch is uh, pressed, the alarm should stop too. And so representing the alarms, this, all these three alarms by a single superstate, I can define the conditions leaving the, the, the superstate that affect all these uh, three substates. And so this allows a simpler representation because if I did not have a, a, a superstate, I would have one, Two arrows coming from alarm one beeps, two, arrow, two arrows coming from alarm two beeps, and another two arrows coming from both beep. And so these six arrows are replaced by only two. In uh, um, RL state charts, there is also the concept of the, the default state as a, or, or initial state. Whenever the, the system goes into a set of, of states, there is a state which is the, the, the default state. And associated to this is the concept of uh, history. The idea, if this is the, 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 the following, if one set of states, if a super state, in this case, the one called alarm one, has history, which is signaled by this H inside a, a circle, when the system gets into this uh, super state, it should enter the last state visited. So in this case, uh, uh, off is the default state. The first time the, the, the system gets into this state, it should go to the off state. If one event D occurs, it moves to the on state. Now, if by some reason it leaves the, the, the the state and returns later on to, to this state because it has history, it will ignore the default state and it will go to the on state. There are two uh, concepts of history, deep history, which is signal with H star and shallow history. Let's have a look at the difference between this uh, these two. Shallow history means that the history is applied to the level that it, it appears. So if this is the case of A on the left hand side. When the system goes into state K, it will remember what was the last state visited. It was G or F and it will move into that state. In each of these states, it will move go to the default state. C if, if it was F or B if it was G. This is shallow history. Deep history means that the concept of history propagates to the underlying state, state machine. So in this case, I have H history, that's deep history, meaning that it will enter this state, it will search for the last visited state for instance, it could be F. And inside F, it will also remember the last visited state. And it can start by, for instance, E, if that was the, the, the last visited state. So in the deep history, I have history for this state, this super state, and I have for all the states that are included in that super state. In shallow history, there's just one level of history and afterwards I forget about history. Was this uh, clear for you? Yes. Okay, thanks. Another concept is uh, orthogonal states or uh, concurrency. 
Orthogonal states means uh, state machines that involve in parallel and uh, they run in independently. Of course, there may be actions in one affecting the, the, the other, but the execution of this one for, uh, occurs at the same time as this one occurs and they involve evolve in parallel. Uh, they are uh, concurrent state, state machines. This is a, uh, a mechanism in uh, state diagrams that allows to simplify a lot uh, some state machines. Let's have this, this example. I have a state machine that controls the, the light. The light can have three colors. I can control the light to be red, yellow, or green, or it can just be off. And I can have the, this light in uh, three styles. It can be off. Uh, it can be steady, so it's fixed, always on. It can be flashing slowly, and it can be flashing quickly. So if we take all the possibilities, we have a state machine more or less like, uh, like this. I have the off state, and then I have the, the red steady. I have the red flashing slowly, the red flashing quickly. It can be yellow steady, it can be yellow flashing slowly, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Notice that this diagram only has the transitions, transitions leaving from the red steady state, okay? So now imagine what is this uh, diagram. If I now add the transitions leaving red flash slow, red flash quick, yellow steady, yellow, yellow flash slow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This will be impossible to read. We, we would only see wires going from one place, arrows going from one place to another. It would be impossible to, to use as a pro, pro, pro programming tool. Now look at the same version, the same state machine using concurrent state machines. Much simpler. Uh, here I'm using two concepts, hierarchy and uh, orthogonal state machines or concurrent state, state, state machines. First, I have one super state called on and I have another state called off. So go on and off moves between these two states. And now when the light is on, I can have, I have two state machines in parallel. One that controls the light, the light color, red, green, or yellow. And another one that controls the way it is working, steady, flashing slowly, or flashing quickly. And so this is much easier to, uh, to understand, much more organized, than the, the, the concept of a single uh, state diagram with no hierarchy, uh, et cetera. So I could represent a whole system using this, uh, this uh, structure with a lot of uh, parallel and concurrent state, state machines. <clears throat> 